Welcome into episode seven of the Briar Chat podcast. I'm Cam Huffman, Director of Public Relations here at the Greenbrier. And uh, if you've been watching our podcast lately, first of all, thank you. We've had a lot, lot of good feedback from, from people who have been watching. We appreciate you watching it, sharing it with your friends, passing it along to, to friends and family who love the Greenbrier or who may not know much about the Greenbrier and you want to teach them a little bit about it, have them check out the Briar, Briar Chat podcast. But for the third week in a row, and I know some of you are, all are thinking this is becoming a golf podcast. We didn't mean it that way. But uh, it's that time of the year here at the Greenbrier and Golf obviously is a big deal here. So we uh, we met our new director of golf instruction a couple of weeks ago. We um, profiled Sam Snead on his birthday. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the West Virginia Amateur Tournament here at the Greenbrier. And we're joined today by the executive director, the interim executive director, that's the correct title, right? Yeah. <laughs> of the, the West Virginia Golf Association, Chris Slack. Chris, we appreciate you being here. Thanks, Cam. Appreciate it. We, you know, we love coming to the Greenbrier. So glad to be here. Absolutely, and this is the 104th playing of the West Virginia Amateur Tournament, and I, I tried to figure it out yesterday. If I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, you can correct me if you know. I believe this is the 95th time that it's been played at the Green Bar. Yeah, I had 96 in my mind, but yeah, the, less than 10 times it's been held elsewhere. So that, that, that's incredible. Started back in 1913, playing it in, in Fairmont, I believe, the first Fairmont year. Fairmont Field Club. And uh, it's, it's quite a tradition in West Virginia. And so uh, before we get too deep into the amateur, uh, let's just uh, get to know a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how you ended up in golf and, and what you do on a daily basis at the West Virginia Golf Association. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, born and raised in, uh, in West Virginia um, from Winfield. Um, uh, in college, went to West Virginia State and got an internship uh, with the Golf Association. Um, the USGA actually provides internships for all the golf associations um you know really liked really liked it um ken tackett was our executive director at the time um and a spot opened and i came on full time in 2012 um kind of ran junior golf for seven eight years and then just kind of progressed through and um you know here we are so it's uh we run the, the what the West Virginia Golf Association is. We have eighteen championships now. We have, you know, seventy-five one-day events. Um, we run USGA qualifiers. We administer the first tee of West Virginia. Um, so we have a hand in anything golf-related. But uh, this is uh, our, uh, our our state amateur here at the Greenbrier is is definitely our our crown jewel every year. Uh, absolutely. And from, from a golfing perspective, how did you sort of first get into golf? Has it, has it been a part of your life all the way through or where did you sort of? Yeah, I was probably, I don't know, nine or 10 when I started playing, give or take. Uh -huh. um, played in my first tournament. It was a nine hole tournament when I was 12 years old. Um, you know, played high school golf in college. So didn't grow up, a, you know, a country club um but we had a little public golf course um a little nine hole course down down the road so yeah i've been playing for the majority of my life mm -hmm. and when we talk about the, this this west virginia amateur i i guess you, you have to look at the history of this event as we said it began in 1913 and but the, you know when you look at the list of the winners when when one of the best amateur golfers of all time is from your state and, and, and bill campbell 100 that, that definitely uh puts the, the tournament on the map a little bit a 15 time winner and he kind of set the precedent for what this tournament has become yeah mr campbell was the perennial amateur um you know a, a lot of times the you know through the year and even even today your our top tier ams they try to go make it professionally um which uh you know a few of them succeed but um you know mr campbell stayed an amateur his whole career as you mentioned won it 15 times uh, he was our first inductee into our West Virginia Golf Hall of Fame. He's the logo on our uh, West Virginia Golf Association logo. Uh, he was, you know, th that first Hall of Fame class was him and Sam Snead. Uh, and it was held actually here at the Greenbrier back in 2009. So, and a lot of people have followed in, in Mr. Campbell's footsteps. And, you know, Pat Carter, 13-time champion. The list goes on and on. But, um, but yeah, for sure. When you talk about the Bill Campbell and Pat Carter, as you said, 15 and 13 between the two of them, uh, they dominated this tournament for a lot of years, and, and uh, both of them won it several times when they were they were much older. But here recently, it, it seems like it's sort of become a, a young man's game out here a little bit. It kind of has become a young man's game out here. Um, you know, our last our, our last few chance. You know, Philip Real won two years ago, and that was you know he, he he's 
upper 30. I think he was 38 or so when he won. Um, but other than that, the two years prior, or our defending champion, Noah Mullins, was 22. Alex Easton was 20. Mason Williams was 19. Um, you know, so you keep going back and back. It's it's definitely becoming a younger man's game. And, and looking at the leaderboard right now, starting our final round today, definitely shows that as well. Well, when you look at the, the, the field in, in this tournament, People come obviously from a lot of different places and, and a lot of different different backgrounds. You see college go golfers, you see high school golfers, you see um, it's some of the older guys, as we said, that just just play for fun. Uh, it, it's a it's a wide mix in this tournament, isn't it? Wide mix. Um, you know, we have qualifiers statewide, so we have, um, I think we have 10, 10 players from the Eastern Panhandle. Um, you know, about that number from the Wheeling North up in the Northern Panhandle. Obviously, a lot from North Central, the Huntington, Charleston, um, and then obviously the southern part of the state as well was well represented. We have our youngest player in the field this week, uh, 14 years old, um, made the cut. He's in the top 20 starting today. Um, and then our oldest player in the field, a uh, 60 year old uh, guy out of Morgantown. So, wide range of uh, you know backgrounds, different golfers, but definitely age as well. That, that's amazing, and that has to be one of the special aspects about this tournament. Is is some of those guys might be paired together. You might get a fourteen year old paired with it, and uh, that, that, that's what the game of golf's all about. Yep. Is, is learning from from different people and different perspectives. Yeah, and that's you know as long as you're a resident, um, you know we so are we have over almost four hundred people try to qualify for the state am. So it's so it's definitely important for the ones here, but you know a lot of people out there trying to make it too statewide. Absolutely. You mentioned those qualifiers a couple of times. Tell us a little bit about the process. How do how do you get into the, the state amateur? Yeah, so we have six state six qualifiers statewide. Um, we uh, you know they all, you just have to be a resident, a uh, male resident of the state with an active handicap uh, through the golf association, and seventy five dollars to enter a qualifier. And um, you know however many we you know have is how many however many make the field. Um, 120 person full field here. So we, we narrow it down from the qualifiers. That's how you get here to the Greenbrier. Are there automatic exemptions as well? Automatic exemptions, all past champions are in for life. Um, and then recent play, you know, the top 25 from this week will are exempt in the next year. And then with there's some exemptions from other events through the year too to get you here. But we had about, about 30 some people are exempt. And then we'll, we'll go into a little bit about the, the format. It's, it's four days of competition, and they, they alternate between the Meadows course and the Old White. Yep, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So this year, rounds one and three were on Meadows. Rounds two and our final round uh, over on Old White. That's, uh, you know, that, that's pretty unique. It's, it's uh, a lot of times golf tournaments are just on one course. So, so it's pretty cool um, get, getting to play both courses, even if you don't make the cut. Uh, you still get to play both. Um, you know, a lot of guys come down and play practice rounds, spend the week down here, and play both in the practice rounds too. So it's it's very well received. Um, for a long time, you know, it was the Greenbrier course and uh, Old White, but but the Meadows is this week definitely showed its uh, sh showed its teeth on, on on what it can do. It, it's it's tough. It's nothing. It's a very good golf course, just obviously, just like Old White is. But absolutely, I mean, what a, what a great way to determine a champion as well. I mean, because if you're playing two different courses, you've got to have a. And these two courses are pretty different as well. It's Very not, different. So the the champion is going to have to have a lot of different shots in his bag to come yeah, out on top. A hundred percent. Yeah, Meadows is definitely on the shorter side compared to Old White, but there's a lot more trouble on Meadows. Um, you know, penalty areas out of bounds, stuff like that. But Old White is a is a big boys golf course. Um, hence is why the PJ Tour was here for an event. And then live golf, obviously coming later in the summer. Right. Well, when you look around the, the, at, at other states, obviously uh, I'm sure other states have have great amateur tournaments, but uh, having it here at the Green Bar has to be something special that sets you, sets you apart. Uh, not only the the history of the Green Bar is kind of iconic in the in the world of golf, but as you said, you know the PGA Tour has come here, and for for a, a while when the PGA Tour was here, the amateur champion got an exemption into that tournament. So yep. pretty special playing playing here, and something maybe a, a lot of people don't have back in their state. A hundred percent. You know, I, I I don't know what every state does for their state amateur, but there's the ones I do know. There's no comparison. Our state amateur has to be 
I mean, being here, I mean, what a special place, right? I mean, and, and knowing, and these guys have played year after year. I mean, it's, you still get that feeling when you pull into the gates at the Greenbrier, like, you know, you kind of in awe for a second. Um, I mean, the, the, the Greenbrier is the state amateur. Um, you know, we, 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 we love it here. Uh, the guys truly love it. And, and like you said, I mean, I, I don't think there's another state amateur in the country that, that has the tradition and, you know, the, the golf courses that, that, that we have each and every year playing here. Absolutely. And we, we mentioned some of those, those champions getting, a getting to play in the Greenbrier Classic or military the tribute that the Greenbriers became. And, and a lot of them showed themselves well, and that has to, uh, to be a big yep. feather in the cap for, for your association and golf in West Virginia in, in general. hundred percent. Yeah. That was, um, that, that was a very special thing. Mr. Justice did every year for us. Um, you know, given the champion, the letting the champion play in the, in the tour event uh, on a sp sponsor's exemption. It was, that, I mean, that was something that the guys really, really look forward to and, uh, and, and really cherished when, when the, the, the handful that got to play. So take us through a little bit about what, what all is involved in kind of putting a tournament like this together and getting everything going. I mean, you don't, you don't just show up and, and get your tea time at the clubhouse right. and roll out there. There's a lot that goes into it, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, we have a great staff, um, you know, basically the year prior, you know, 2024 is going to start very soon with scheduling. Um, you know, Hill Herrick, the, the head golf professional here, best in the business. Um, you know, Kelly Shoemate, the director of grounds, you know, we get with them, what date works for the resort. We get it on the calendar. Did you start planning qualifiers? Um, you know, so there's a lot of coordinating with Hill and Tommy and them guys, those guys in the, in the shop and Kelly, you know, coming down here to set the golf courses up a couple of days early. Um, you know, obviously once our qualifiers are over, then we, then we put the tee times out. So, you know, people know what time they're, you know, everything from A to Z, but, but we have a, we have a very good staff. Um, and the, the staff, like I said, here at the Green Bar is great to work with. So anything we need. We can lean on them a little bit, um, so it's a, it's definitely a group effort, but it's it's a big it's a big effort. Like, like I said, this is our this tournament is kind of our mecca. That's right. From from a golfer's perspective, the the participants in the tournament, what's what's the week look like for them? They they arrive, play a practice round, enjoy the green bar a little bit, and mm -hmm. then, then get started. Then get started. Yeah, a lot of them come and play too. So a lot of people have been here since Friday. Uh, they played Friday, Saturday practice rounds, one one on each course. Um, and then the tournament Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, you know, it's, it's a great week for the guys. They, it's just, you know, in the evenings, reminiscing, hanging out on the driving range after play upstairs, um, you know, in the restaurant or bar and it's, it's, it, 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 it's a really special week for a lot of people. And then what's the, uh, what's the cut look like hey, it, after two rounds, you, you make a cut at that point. So yeah, after two rounds, we, we cut the field to the low, to the low 50 players and ties. Um, so we had 52 make it this year. Okay. And just, uh, just take us through the week a little bit so far. What's it, what's it been like? We're, we're recording this here on the, the day of the final morning of the final round. Um, by the time people watch it, the, the tournament will be over and we'll, uh, a little bit later be joined by our champion, but just, uh, how's the week going overall for you? You know, it's been great. Um, practice round days were, were beautiful. It was very, very nice to do course setup. Um, you know, Sunday we got... We got a little bit of rain in the afternoon. Um, Monday, we uh, the rain kind of came late morning, but by Monday afternoon, the sunshine came out, and it's been it's been great ever since. We uh, we've been lucky. We did not have to. There were no delays, or we didn't have to stop play or anything like that. So everything is you know it wasn't sunny in seventy five for the first two days, but it was yesterday, and it sure is today. So I'm looking forward to. To an exciting finish for sure, and that, that kind of goes along the lines of what we were talking about earlier. Playing these two different courses is is a great way to determine a true champion. Lots of different weather too. So. Lots of different weather, yeah. So, and that's what, and that's kind of what happened because we kind of had like your first half of the field who plays in round one. They're the back half of the field in round two. So that that the the guys who played late Sunday and early Monday definitely got the uh, the worst of the weather, um, but our two guys who were first and second in the tournament hadn't started the, the final round here were were in those conditions so they definitely you know 
I had to play through some bad stuff, but no doubt. And looking at the scores overall, uh, as you said, these two courses have been quite a test for these competitors. Quite a test, yeah. You know, it's typically anything around even par starting the final round. You're 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 kind of in the thick of it, and when you know one under's leading, um, even par two over, and a handful there at, at three and four over. So, still still anybody's ball game. Right. Well, we'll uh, we'll let you get back to it. I know you got a lot to do today, but we appreciate you joining us, filling us in a little bit, and. Uh, we, uh, at the, on behalf of the Green Bar, I know we appreciate everything you guys do as well. And it's the first class tournament and run the right way. And we're, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate it, Cam. And again, I just want to thank the Green Briar Resort, um, Astor Auto, um, our title sponsor of this championship. They are great to us. Um, so love the Green Briar, love Astor Auto, and thank you all so much. All right. Well, we appreciate it. When we come back, we'll be joined by the champion of the 104th West Virginia Amateur. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Briar Chat Podcast. We're joined now by our champion of the 104th West Virginia Amateur, Cam Jarvis. And I imagine that has to pre sound pretty good just hearing that, right? It sounds real good. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's still sinking in. Right. Well, we'll uh, we're going to walk through kind of the week for you and everything like that. But before we get into that, I just wanted to get to know you a little bit better. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how you how you got into golf, and, and kind of how you got to this point. All right. Yeah, I'm... You know, I'm from Barbersville, West Virginia, you know, about two hours away from the Greenbrier, two and a half if you're a slow poke. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, I got into golf whenever I was eight years old. Uh, my mom had a co conference up at Pipestem, not too far from here. And my dad said, hey, let's go buy some clubs and, and get out there and get after it. So uh, my first ever shot was on Pipestem Par 3, and I hit a driver from about 100 yards and stuck it about five feet. And my dad said, I think you got something here. So. Ever since that moment, I just kept on with it, and I've loved every single day since. And it's amazing to get to be here and get to be with the trophy and uh, have it for the next year. <laughs> Obviously, this has to be the highlight of your golf career. But, but prior to this, what what's the biggest moment in your in your golf career? Um, I think today I drew on uh, a couple rounds in particular. Um, whenever I was about 12 years old, I had a, a qualifying round to get to play in the U.S. Kids World Golf Championship where I had to shoot a certain number to do it. And I accomplished that, got there, it was amazing. And a couple years later, I, uh, I had another chance to play in the U.S. Kids, this time the World Teen Golf Championship at Pinehurst. And I got to play on Pinehurst number two the final day. And with championship tees, they just gave us two extra par fives. Um, shot 69 that day, almost shot 30 on the back nine. and. Uh, crept my way up near the lead. So that was that was the biggest moment aside from this. Uh, I've played a lot of great high school rounds and a lot of golf in the last uh, decade plus, but today and yesterday and the day before and the day before that have been the most special for sure. Absolutely. So you played high school at Cabell Midland, right? Yep, sure did. Uh, so you graduated what year? Graduated last year in 2022. And uh, what are you doing now? I'm at UK, um, at the University of Kentucky, and uh, uh, I got there last year. I've loved the uh, first two semesters. Um, I'm not playing golf there. I'm just focusing on academics and then playing golf uh, every time I'm not in the classroom or hanging out with my family or friends. So it's been it's been a really good transition so far. So how, how often are you playing? If you're not playing on the team, how often are you able to get out there? I'd argue I'm playing more than they are, honestly. Um, I, I was able to work my schedule to where I only have classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 12.15, both semesters. So I was playing golf Monday, I was playing golf Tuesday afternoon, I was playing golf Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, I was able to get to come home each and every weekend and go back and, and maintain a 4.0 both semesters and, and play as much golf as possible. So it was, really, it was really good to be there with my family and get to see them grow just as I got to grow at the same time, and that's really special and important to me. Well, congratulations on all that. that that's unbelievable. Do you uh, are there any desires to to play college golf now? Or are you, are you hoping to be able to do that? Or what what's your, what kind of your thought process there? If the right opportunity came, um, you know, I would certainly be interested. Um, I can't say one way or the other. Uh, you know, I came to this tournament last year not knowing if I was going to play competitive golf. Period, and then had a strong showing and said, I think I get, still got some in the tank. Come out this year and, and to win it. Um, I know I have a lot left. I don't know if I. I don't know if I can go back to playing for somebody, though. Um, I'm playing for myself right now, and it's the most free I've ever been. It's it's so 
uh, relaxing and surreal to know that the work that I put in is for myself and not for uh, somebody else or something else. It's just for the goals that I set out to achieve, and, and that's really cool. So that, that's awesome. I, I imagine you will be uh, hearing from a couple college coaches though after they see these scores this week because it, it's pretty impressive what you did. Only player to pit finish under par in a great competitive field, and you kind of kind of ran away with it down the stretch. Yeah, I had no idea about that. Uh, that somebody told me a minute ago. I was I made a birdie on nine to go five up on anybody. Um, you know, I honestly I didn't even know until that that last putt dropped on eighteen that I even won. Uh, you know, I heard everybody start screaming. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I I grinded every single second all day long, and and every shot was so important to me. Um, and you know, I, there were some great moments out there, but. I, I can't pick a favorite shot because I needed them all, you know, and that was so important, so cool, and so special to be able to to do. Don't want to make you too emotional here, but I, but I know I saw a ton of emotion from you after after it was all over. Where's that come from? What, why does this mean so much to you? Yeah, um, to have my one of my best friends on the bag last year and this year, and to get to spend all week with him, it's been so cool and and fun and and light, and it's been keep me motivated, and then. To have my grandmother who's been, I don't know if she's ever missed a golf tournament, and there's been hundreds. I don't know if she's ever missed one. She was here all week long. And I have all my family who's supported me so, so much throughout my entire life. But, you know, none more so in the, in the last year whenever I, I really didn't know what the future looked like for me. Um, to have them support me and then apparently be watching me all day from the, from the trees where I couldn't see them uh, was really special to find out as I walked up the hill. Um, and have my dad, you know, he's, he was my cat. He's the guy who got me in the golf. He plays more rounds with me than anybody. Um, he gave me the pep talk last night, tonight, this morning, you know, I, he told me everything I needed to do. And all it was, was be yourself, you know, um, he told me to believe it. He told me to believe it every single shot. And, um, I did all day long. And that was really cool. Well, that's awesome. What, what an incredible accomplishment. Uh well, let's just walk back through the week a little bit. Um, well, first of all, what, what day did you get here? What, what did your practice rounds look like? Got here on Saturday. I uh, got here early in the morning and um, came out, did a little bit of chipping, hit some balls and, and some putting, and then we went out to play the old white. Uh, that's what I do every year. I don't ever play the Meadows before. I just go out and play the old white. I don't take practice rounds very seriously. Uh, I don't ever keep score. I rarely finish a hole. I just like to hit shots. And if they're to my liking, cool, move on. I get ready for the next day. My attitude is always uh, you work before you get there. That way you don't put in work while you're there, okay? You know, I mean, whenever you're here, it's time to play. There's no more grinding at the range. It's it's grinding on the golf course, and that's a different place. And and uh, that was the attitude all week. You know, I have everything in the toolbox. Just go use it. Um, and that's what happened, you know. Uh, first and second days were some of the worst weather I've ever had to play in, and I got the bad draw both days. I was in the rain all day long on su Sunday and I was in the rain all day long on Monday and it was a grind but it was I you know I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world it was so much fun to to get to hit shots you never have to hit generally I don't have to hit very many uh, long irons into par fours or have to hit I had to hit one three wood which you know I I, hit, I swing the golf club 125 miles an hour so to have to do that it was it was pretty interesting pretty cool and um what a week what a week Speaking of, of of the week, what did you do away from the course? Were you, were you able to, obviously you said you, you try to relax while you're out here, great place to relax. What, what were yeah. you able to do away from the course? Uh, well, we stay in Lewisburg every year. Uh, you can't get much better food uh, as far as West Virginia goes. I mean, uh, I know a lot of good restaurants all across the state, but there's about five or six right down here in about a block radius that I, I think I'd put up against all of them. So ate a lot of food is what I did. Um, we we got kind of a little bit later-ish tea times both days. Um, so we didn't have much to do in the evening. We had dinner reservations every night at 730. So, you know, we got in three or four. I relaxed. I just laid on the hotel in the hotel and just tried to chill out, watch the NBA, uh, Eastern Conference finals. Um, just had a good time, you know, uh, chilling with my best friend and my grandma. Right. You know, it's, it was a pretty good week. We had a lot of fun together, a lot of laughs. Um, it was just really cool. We, you talked about the, the conditions you played in the first two days, and, and we talk, talked to, to Chris about this earlier on the podcast. Uh, this this amateur has to be as as true as you can get at, tra at crowning a true champion. 
playing two very different golf courses and, and then this week being tested with weather as well. The the man that came out on top, which was you, ha had to have every tool in the bag for sure this week. Yeah, um, you know, as far as that goes, it, it's it's confidence, it's self belief, it's to understand that conditions are just there. You're here, you know. You have to be so in the moment, so into the shot to understand that there is nothing outside of it aside from what you you know. Every everything's your in your hands. You gotta you gotta be the one to do it. And all week long, I just, uh, I believed in my hands and I believed in all the work that I put in, all the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours that I put into the sport and understanding how to control a golf ball, how to play in tough weather, how to make putts when you need to make putts, how to hit shots whenever things aren't going your way to get it back on course. And, uh, you know, every time I, I felt the, you know, the train going off the rails, uh, I was right there to, to get it back on and get going even faster. And that was really amazing to me that I, every time I was near, you know, I was on the precipice of, of greatness or of, of falling away, I stood towards greatness. And that was something that my dad has always instilled in me, my whole family, my mom, uh, toughest woman I've ever known. And um, it's it's really showed this week. I had, I've had such a great support to get me there. I know you said in the, the trophy presentation that there's no better place to, to play it than here at the Greenbrier, no better place that you'd rather be. Um... Are you a golf historian at all? Does, does the uh, the people that have played here and won here mean a lot to you? It really does, and I'm a Guy Ann member in Huntington, and um, uh, William C. Campbell is, you know, William C. Campbell Way, as you drive in, he has a beautiful uh, plaque and all his championships and his trophies, and having won this himself 15 times and been a president of the USGA and of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club and, and been here for many years, I mean, it's... It's so special to know that my name is, is right there etched in history with him for as long as it stands. So it's really amazing. Um, and it's, I'm really proud that I get to be the second one in a row behind Noah Mullins last year to bring this cut back home to Guyane. Great. So what's, what's next for you? Back to the grind? Or you relax a little? Or what do you do now? Vacation time. Yeah, no, it's back to the grind. But uh, June is a busy month, traveling to the beach, going to Iceland. I think we're going to go head down to a country music festival in Nashville. So it's going to be a lot of traveling. There'll be some golf in there for sure. Um, but it's going to be just a lot of relaxing and, and enjoying life. All right. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate you joining us. We uh, congratulate you on an awesome tournament. And uh, on behalf of the Greenbrier, I know you uh, represent this tournament and the Greenbrier well as you move on. So uh, congratulations and best of luck with whatever lies ahead. Thank you very much. I'm honored. All right, there he is, our champion Cam Jarvis here of the 104th West Virginia Amateur. We appreciate you watching the Briar Track podcast. We remind you to tune in every Monday for a new episode and to give us some feedback on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you watch it. Let us know what you want to see in the future and what you like about the show so far. If you have any questions, leave those for us as well. Appreciate you joining us. We'll see you at the Greenbrier.